So, what's the best guitar pick? That's a cool little discussion, isn't it? Because we got a lot of power packed into a little piece of plastic here. You know, we spend a lot of time on picking the right guitar and the right strings. Should I go high or low action? Because the strings ring out more when I have high action and fatter strings. And all of these things matter, of course. But it suddenly dawned on me as I was hearing Paul Gilbert play with new pickups at, at one point in the past. And then it suddenly dawned on me that, hey, he's playing totally different pickups and it's a totally different guitar he's playing, but he still sounds like Paul Gilbert because of his picking technique, right? The way he hits the string. And there's so much sound packed into how you articulate each note, how much of a pinch harmonic you have. Does the pick hit the string clean? Do you mute it? Do you have a little bit of palm muting on everything you do? Like Ali Miola style? <laughs> Right? Oh, what goes on when you're picking? And, and, and it's just such an amazing uh, power we have um, of how we pick the string. But it starts with the pick, of course. And uh, this is not uh, a little thing, because if this is a string... See, I have the, my professor board here. This is a string like uh, cross-section, right? And we have a pick coming at the string here. And let's say the pick looks like this. Right? We got a... Uh, we got a round tip here, a little bit of an exaggeration, but this is, um, and then imagine it going back and back and forth here over the string. Is it a sharp sound you're going to hear, or is it a soft sound? The more the pick kind of grazes the string like a tennis ball, imagine that. That will give you kind of a thumb, like a soft. That's why jazz players, they like the soft sound, so they play the neck pick up, and they play with a very round, fat tip. It's not important how the pick looks. It's just, a, you know, do you have the right grip? And is it inflexible or is it flexible? I like the inflexible ones because the flexible will give me a delay on my picking, which is a disaster when it comes to alternate picking and having precision. Because then if you go for another pick, maybe of the same, same brand, it might be a slight different you know, delay you get because it's a little bit stiffer. So you want something that's absolutely inflexible. But when it comes to the tip, which is really the most important thing of the pick, on the pick, <clears throat> when you have a round tip, you get a soft sound. When you have a sharp tip, like a knife, like let me just draw that again, because I want to have something that is really sharp here, like that, like a pencil's tip here. When you start picking the string with that one, you will get a sharper uh, high-end sound than with the rounded one. And this is some, an important thing here because are you choosing based on sound? Because if you're choosing the pick based on sound, it's like you can have a sharp sound and a soft sound with this pick. It just depends on whether you are angling it a little bit. Because if I do this, let's say I'm picking totally parallel to the string with this kind of pick. Then I get a very high-end, very sharp sound like this. Totally parallel. But if I take my pick and then I do this with it, then I'm actually picking with the side. So if I'm picking like this, right, with the string, then suddenly I emulate this. I get a soft sound. So let me just do that. This is parallel. Hear that? So I can go, I can go. I can get the soft sound with my sharp pick by angling it a little bit, or very much. So that's not really a reason to, to select this pick. Otherwise, you know, it, I might just want that, that dulled down sound. I'm playing jazz, I really like it. So I'm, And this is easier to pick with. It's not as merciless as this one. This is just totally, if you have just the slightest bit of inaccuracies when it comes to picking depth, as to how close you are to the string. If you sometimes pick the string here, right? That's one pick stroke, and then the next pick stroke, you pick it here. That little difference in picking depth, you know, down towards the body of the guitar, will mean an increase in twice the amount of resistance you feel when you pick. So I might have a down stroke that goes down here, and an up stroke that goes down up there. Those two things will be totally different in resistance. And if you're trying to achieve a even picking pattern down, up, down, up, and you experience the, twice the, re the resistance on your way up, then what are you going to do? 
you're going to either force through the string so it doesn't matter because you're using your whole arm to do the picking motion or you're picking very deeply because if you're picking down here all the time let's say you you force your pick into the string and you're picking here right this is where your your pick goes all the way down here right then it won't matter as much with the precision thing right because if you're here or there it doesn't matter here there same amount of resistance it's only when you get into the surface of the string but if you want to become really good at picking you know relatively fast when it comes to alternate picking you want to pick just in the surface of the string it should be like if you watch the guitar from here right you shouldn't be able to see the pick below the string right so if i'm picking like that if i'm looking just at an angle like that i shouldn't be able to see the tip of the pick below the strings because i'm picking no deeper than the string itself people rarely do this because that requires you to be really precise if your pick is constantly in the surface of the string then you will have the least amount of resistance when you pick so you you use the least amount of force and it's much easier to get an even picking motion and it's effortless right if i pick deeper it becomes a different story here so we got different priorities here this is easier to pick with why because this is not as merciless if i pick here with a rounded tip then because it kind of slides over the string because it's round like a tennis ball it doesn't matter that much if i just pick a little bit deeper if i do that with this sharp end here that will create a huge amount of resistance certainly but with this one it kind of slides off the string right that's why it creates the soft sound so this is what gives you the most control over your sound so where should we what should we do then I, I don't want to choose my my picking tool on the basis of sound. I want to be able to do both, have the soft and the sharp sound. That gives me the most amount of, you know, expression in my playing. But I also want to make it as easy as possible for you or anybody else to start getting results when it comes to picking. So I would go for this until this is no longer necessary. All right? That's what I did. Alternate picking was quite a tough nut to crack, right? So what I did was I, I created the best possible, uh, you know, the easiest possible instrument to play at. I just tuned down one half step. So this is E flat, this is A flat, this is D flat and so on. If you have a chromatic tuner, that's no problem. You can totally just go down and the strings become so much softer. I used nickel wounded strings softer strings so we got less tension so it's easier to press the strings down towards the fretboard it's easy to achieve a better synchronization because you don't have to work against the the push of the string and i was using a purple dunlop something with a rounded tip you can see it picker this is a fat pick this is a what is a big stubby dunlop it's fat it's got a cavity for my thumb although I'm not using it as intended because my fingers are just outside the cavity, but then it has a very sharp tip. You can cut stuff with this tip, right? So I get the most amount of tonal control and I can, you know, but it requires me to pick very accurately. And in the beginning, you just want results. Results are everything. When you're practicing and you're not getting results, you give up eventually because the brain simply will, will not allow you to practice without getting results. It's just, and the way you feel that, it's become you become bored with what you play you become frustrated you want to get away from it so you want results so make it as easy as possible including the pick here soft and fat soft right <laughs> think about that um and stiff and flexible and then start practicing picking it will be kind of lenient towards all your little inaccuracies when it comes to picking depth and as you become more accurate with the picking depth and you can pick more and more in the surface then you shift to a, a, a pick that's more sharp. And don't kid yourself here. Don't practice with this one. If it gets you, gives you the least amount of results, work with your brain instead of against it. Our need for significance and feeling like we're accomplished, right? Tells us to use this pick right, off the, right out of the park, right? But don't do it because it will just frustrate you. You can always do it some of the time or when you're out playing or performing, but use this when you practice. Make sure you get as many results as humanly possible. Why?
Because once you are done practicing with this and with the tuning down and with the softer strings and with the low action that almost makes the strings go all right, make it as easy as possible, then shifting to this will be easy. Going up on semitone again and tuning up again will be super easy. And once it's easy, that's the way, that's the point at which you want to make it a little bit harder again and, and tune up and use another pick. And but then you are on the right path and right process, and you're getting results. And who cares what pick you're using? You know, it's details. But you just want to have the luxury, in the end, of being able to influence your tone and get that you know crunchy sound if that's what you want. <laughs> soft sound if you want to so you have all the options you can get right so those are my uh, words on what pick to choose and as I said I'm using this big stubby it's not pretty but um, it's what I ended up using I used to use a DR pick like a very small company don't even know if they exist anymore made out of copper or steel <coughs> a metal pick gave me a cool sound on the strings you can see that in my older videos that's also merciless, very thin all the way through, but stiff and inflexible and, and, uh, and uh, has a very sharp tip. Um, but you find the right path for you. Just remember, make it as easy as possible to learn what it is that you need to learn. And then you can move towards something that's a little bit more merciless, but has more options when it comes to sound. Uh, and then don't forget to subscribe to this channel. <laughs> Go visit our website, click the link below for a free course on alternate picking or uh, sweet picking, whatever uh, is on right now, uh, legato, and then I'll see you in the next video.